Today I'm brewing what can be described as truly an American beer, that is a beer style native to the US, and that is California Common. And I'm going to be controlling fermentation temperature using this stuff. I'm Martin Keane, taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. And California Common, well, it's a clean and crisp beer. It looks and tastes like a lager. It uses lager yeast, but it's brewed at ale temperatures. And like most American beer styles, it's pleasantly hopped. But we're not going for citrusy or fruity hop aromas this time. We're going for more of the earthy, and woody aromas. Now this is a beer that's going to have an original gravity of 1052, which will give us about a 5% beer, just a little bit under. Now the main ingredient, the base malt for this beer is pale two-row malt, and that's gonna make up 75% of this grist. Then to this somewhat blank canvas, we do want to draw out a bit of malty sweetness. So to that end, I'm adding in 10% of caramel 40 and 10% of Munich malt. Also adding in 4% of carapils, and then just for a little touch of sharpness, I'm adding in 1% of chocolate rye. Filling out my cup, coffee talk on the screen porch. So in love, now you're the one I'm losing sleep for. And I hope the wrong one slip right through your magic fingers. And I hope we find some way to fall in love like we were. Yeah, you're the only reason I was California dreaming in the first place. Seeing you in sundress seasons got me. Controlling fermentation temperature is pretty important for most yeast strains. And the way that I do it is I used chest freezers. So here I've got a chest freezer with a temperature controller set to 68 degrees Fahrenheit that's controlling the temperature for my two fermenters in here. But I've recently started fermenting some of my beers in this. This is an Anvil four gallon fermenter and it's designed for small batches. And when I put this thing in my chest freezer, it's kind of dwarfed in there and it honestly seems a bit of a waste to use such a large area to control temperature. So I have got a cooling system to test today that is designed specifically for this fermenter. So let's take a look then at how this cooling system works. And the main difference is rather than using ambient temperature, which is what I do with my chest freezer, I'm gonna control the temperature in here by flowing cold water through the fermenter. And I'm gonna do that using this, which is called a cooling coil. And basically it's gonna hook up to some hose. The hose is going to run icy water through it uh, via a pump and then we're going to control when that icy water should flow through the fermenter using a temperature controller. So that's the basic idea of it but let me show you all of the parts. So first of all we've got this jacket. This jacket is going to wrap around the fermenter itself and that way we will be able to insulate any sort of temperature changes. So this should give us a more consistent temperature reading. I have a stopper here that's gonna go in the top of this thing. And through that stopper, that's where I'm gonna put all of this stuff. So I'm gonna take my cooling coil and that's gonna run through these top, the top of these holes in this, in this uh, stopper. So the cooling coil threads through these two holes here in the stopper. And that's then just gonna sit in the top of this here. You can see it's just basically gonna be running the water into the fermenter. In addition, we need to be able to measure the temperature inside the fermenter. And I have this thermo well to do that. And that also 
goes into this stopper. Now to send water in and out of this, that's where I'm gonna use this submergible pump. So this is really pretty simple. I'm gonna put this pump into uh, a cooler with some icy water and then use that to recirculate. And in addition to that, I'm going to use this temperature controller here uh, with this probe. And this probe is going to go in the, uh, the thermal well here to monitor the temperature. Now I'm gonna try this in a couple of different cooling scenarios, but before I get to that, need to really make some beer. Hops for this, it's all Northern Brewer. I think you'll see a lot of California common recipes tend to favor this hop. So I'm adding it in as my bittering hop at uh, the start of the boil, and this will give me about 35 of the 43 IBU we're expecting to get out of this beer. Um, I'm then going to add half an ounce at 15 minutes from the end of the boil and another half ounce at flame out. I put the jacket on the fermenter and transferred the wort that is now cooled. Came in at a, an original gravity of 1058, so a little bit higher than I was expecting, a bit more efficient. Um, now, this needs to be cooled, this wort, a little bit more before I can pitch any yeast. This is one of the things that I'm finding with brewing in the summer is my groundwater is around 80 something Fahrenheit, so it's just not able to cool down to pitching temperatures, and I want to pitch at about 68 Fahrenheit. So, what a good opportunity to try out a cooling system. So, let's get cooling. So, I've got the lid, which I'm going to put on here and tighten up. And now, in this four port stopper, I've got the cooling coil, and I've also added in my um, thermal well. I'm going to put this in there. There is one unused hole that is going to be used for the airlock. So just quickly drop that in the sanitizer and then put that in. Now I've plugged in my anvil temperature controller and then put the temperature probe into the thermal well here. That's reporting that the beer temperature is currently 87 Fahrenheit and I've set it to say that I want it to be 68 Fahrenheit. So now it's got the cooling light on, which means it will power on whatever cooling device we use to cool this stuff down, and that's going to be my pump. <laughs> So let's see how long it takes to get from 87 Fahrenheit to 68. We're now at 68 Fahrenheit to 20 Celsius. And uh, yeah, I just, I just let it run while I was going about my business cleaning the brewery. A couple of things I realized as this was chilling down. Firstly, um, ice water melts, especially when it's passing through warmer liquid. So uh, this really started to slow down once it got to about 72 until I realized that there was no more ice in here. So I topped this up with ice. Uh, it's much cooler now and then it really started moving quicker. The other thing that I did was every now and again, I would give the wort a stir just by taking this and turning it in a few circles. Wet is a really good insulator, so that just sort of helped to uh, even up the temperature and make sure that everything was getting cooled. But yep, now I am done and ready for the yeast. And I am using Y Yeast 2112. This is California Lager yeast that I am pitching at 68 Fahrenheit, 20 Celsius, so at ale temperatures. So let's add this in. 
And that's it. So now we enter phase two of the cooling experiment, which is to see how this does during fermentation. So right now everything's still plugged in, it's set to 68 Fahrenheit, but the pump isn't running because this thermometer reads that it is currently at 68. So this will cycle on and off as needed, and I'm just going to check this every now and again to check that the water is still relatively cold and maybe add a little bit more ice over the next few days. We're a few weeks along now and yeah, this has worked really well with a little bit of ice. This has done a nice job of maintaining temperature. I do want to give this though one more test and that is to see if I can get from my current temperature, which is 68 Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius, all the way down to cold crash temperatures. So just a little bit above freezing. So I'm curious to see if this can do it, how long it's going to take, and how easy it is to stay at those temperatures. So let's give it a shot. So I left this running most of the day. What I found was within a couple of hours, I got this down to about 45 Fahrenheit, um, but then all my ice melted. So I added more ice, that cooled the water a bit more, but again, I've got just a bucket of water here. So the fact that I'm not able to close this cooler all the way means the ice just keeps on melting. But given that I've not been able to keep ice in this cooler, instead what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this fermenter into my chest freezer, bring that down to the final cold crash temperature of just a couple of degrees above freezing, and move it into a keg and give the beer a try. Okay, so we will try this California Common. Um, now, Lauren, you know, I don't think you know too much about this style, right? I have no idea. I did ask you, you're kind of very vague about it. Well, I, I want you to try it and make your own opinions. So um, let, let's take a look at what you think of the, the color of this one. All right, so it's kind of a deep amber, um, very bubbly. Mm -hmm. I do want to say um, when I poured it, the head retention was amazing. Like it did not go down at it, all. It took me a while to set the cameras up today and uh, yeah, it just... Uh, it just stayed there and that was great. Yeah, it looks, looks really good. Yeah. Okay, now what are we getting on the nose with this one? Me personally, I like, I kind of smell like very faint, like sweet toast. Mm. Yeah. It's very, very, very it is, faint. It is faint, but you're right. It's uh, But it also might be the great head retention that's like... I, I see you're impressed with the head retention on this oh, one. Yeah. yeah. I'm very proud of every time I pour a beer and it looks amazing and then I'm like, oh. You are responsible for our good looking thumbnails on this channel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go in for the taste here. Okay, let's do it. I did take this to the neighborhood outdoor uh, happy hour on Friday. Oh, that everyone drank before I got there. Gotcha. Yes, <laughs> and uh, the I think the, the the thing that most people said was this is very drinkable, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is just tr to say it's very easy drinking. It, it was a boiling hot afternoon and it's kind of perfect for that sort of environment. Um, yeah, it's everything's quite subtle about it, I think. Yeah, it's quite subtle. One thing to say about this beer, because you mentioned lagers earlier, it, it does use ya lager yeast mm -hmm. to, to brew it, but lager yeast is usually fermented at cold temperatures, but actually you take this lager yeast and you ferment it at ale temperatures. So it's kind of like, if you think about like a, kind of like a hybrid beer. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's a hybrid beer. So it's a, it's a lager that's brewed like an ale. Now, next week's beer is, uh, well, what did you call this, amber colored? Amber. Uh, yeah, the, the next beer is just a shade darker than this, but not only am I gonna brew next week's beer, but I'm also going to have a hand in preparing the ingredients. So that is next week. You are? I am, oh, yeah, cool. I am. But for now, Lauren. In lieu of my shirt. Cheers. Cheers.